What is up, YouTube? And today, we're gonna be doing another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. What are you doing? I'm filming a video. Get out of here. Jeez. All right, guys, now that my sister's already done the intro, we're gonna be going over the neon draw effect today. And it's something that is used all the time. I've used it a lot in my recap videos. I know there's music videos that use it, and it looks a little something like this. Just a little something simple like that to make your person or your items or your subject pop out a little bit more. And uh, let's get into DaVinci and I'll teach you guys how to do this cool effect. All right guys, now that we are back in DaVinci Resolve yet again, we are gonna be going over this neon draw effect. So as you can see right down here in the timeline, I have a clip of some geese that I shot when I was in Amsterdam recently. And I put a quick color grade on that, but from here what we wanna do is right click on your clip and you want to push new fusion clip. Once you've done that, make sure your playhead is over your fusion clip and let's right, come right down here to the fusion tab. Now that we are in fusion, the first thing I always like to do is I, used to, I come over here, right click on here and we come down to rename. You can also push F2 if you want as a shortcut. We'll just rename this footage and I always come down here, you can hit F2, let me put final video that way we just stay organized all right so the first thing that we want to do for this effect is create a background node so if you hit shift spacebar and you just type in background it'll pop up right there you want to hit add and we don't need a merge node right now we will eventually but we do not want to merge our background end right away so just click off the pipeline and this merge node can come right in between the footage and the final video. And I'm going to bring our background node right up there. And the next thing we want to do with our background node selected is hit shift spacebar. And we are going to type in soft glow. And that will pop up right there. You want to add that. And with soft glow selected, hit shift spacebar again and type in paint just like that and with the paint selected we're going to come over here and we're going to pipe it in to the foreground of the merge one and if you did it right everything will turn black and of course it's not what we want but that is because our background color is set to black what you want to do is come down here on the right in the inspector tab of make sure your background node is selected where it says alpha just grab a hold of that and bring it all the way down and that will bring it everything back into your picture or your uh, video. So the next thing we want to do, we don't need to mess around with the background node anymore at all. Let's come back to the first frame of this and I'm going to try to outline this swan right here just a little bit. So if you hold control or command and you want to use your scroller wheel, you can zoom in so you can make this swan just a little bit bigger. I want to come to our soft glow. I'm not going to mess with any of the controls on this just yet. Guys, I'm editing this video and I noticed that I screwed up on one thing and then I also noticed I did not really talk much about the soft glow. So the one thing that I made a mistake on, uh, the paint node should come before the soft glow node. It should always come before the soft glow node, otherwise the soft glow will not affect the paint node. Always make sure that it goes your background to your paint node to your soft glow node, to your media out or your footage. You're gonna, the background acts as like your canvas that you draw on and that's why we make it the alpha mat all the way down so it's transparent. Paint node's obviously what you're painting with and the soft glow node makes it glow. And if you click on your soft glow node, if you see over here we got like our filter, threshold, gain, glow size, your clipping mode and your blend what i only i normally only mess with the glow size sometimes i mess with the blend but very rarely i usually just keep the glow size at like kind of like the default parameter or maybe you know i'll come up to like 30 40 or 50. i never usually go over 50 just because it becomes too much if you see right here 
yeah i mean there's so many different options you can mess with in here and it allows you just to kind of be creative in your own way so now let's get back to this tutorial so most of everything is going to be controlled with our paint node right now so if you want to open up brush controls this will control your size and your softness of your brush or your brush shape or anything like that i'm going to keep it a circle but i want to bring it down just a little bit in size so that way we can draw on our swan that looks about good now that we have our brush size controlled what we want to do is adjust our color so you come down here where it says color and we can go and adjust it to anything we want on this little uh, square right here so if i wanted it to be red i could come over here and draw red but i think i want this to be like a teal so we're gonna come down here and we'll make this a nice vibrant teal you can also use your uh, green and red sliders down there as well to control your colors but i always just adjust it right here you can type in certain uh numbers here to adjust if you have like all that figured out you can do that as well and this right down here is your stroke duration so every time i'm draw something on here it is only going to last one frame if this was an image that was staying still and wasn't moving and uh, I wanted it to be a certain amount of frames as we can see right here in Fusion. This is a 41 frame long clip. I could set this, I could type in 41 or I could have it last for 30. But for now, I want to keep it just at one frame per little stroke. So we'll keep it at that. Sometimes I go to two depending on how fast my clip is moving. But right now we'll just start on one. So all you do from here is you just draw a little bit and then push our frame over and as you can see it disappears so if you need to know where it is to reference where you want to draw again is you can come over here leave your little paintbrush right there and i'm going to draw just up come back over again draw up draw up and I'm going to speed this guy up so you guys don't have to sit and watch me outline this completely. What I'm going to do is do little lines all the way around the swan and then I'm going to completely outline it and maybe even color it in for the rest of the frames. But I'll speed it up so you guys don't have to see it. Alright, once you have all of your effect drawn onto your clip, we can just push spacebar and it'll play through just like this. And what we'll do is go back into the edit page so we can just see what this looks like. Uh, so this is what it'll look like once it's rendered through and you have it completely outlined and you have everything done and your effect is completely drawn. So it'll look like a, something like this. Just a little simple outline on the goose and then it'll flash to a fully outlined goose. But there's much more that you can do with this effect. So if we come back into a fusion let's completely reset this whole entire paint node because we don't want it to outline the uh the goose at all so what we want to do is we want to draw hmm, let's see let's draw a little x right here on the wall or let's draw something on the wall so come down to our paint node make sure everything's selected we have selected our green and now that we came back into Fusion, we have our paint node selected, but we have no brush. What you have to do is come up here to your toolbar on the left here and just select the brush. Now, once that's selected, you'll see it pop right back up. Let's come back to our brush controls. I'm going to bring that size. I'm going to bring the size down just a little bit again. All right. Now, before we go to draw anything, what we want to do is we want to come down to our stroke duration and we want to bump it up to how long we want this smiley face to last. Now I want it to last as long as we can have it last. So that's 30 frames long. And if I wanted it to last longer, I could type in however many frames I wanted it to last for in there. But I want to just draw a little smiley face. So let's make a little circle here. And a little circle here. And a smiley face there. Now if you notice, when we play it through or we drag our cursor through... It doesn't stick to this wall and that's what I wanted so that way I can have these effects stick to certain things that in clip or in your photo or whatever you're putting it on now to do this we've gone over the planar tracker before but we're going to be using it again so we want to click on our footage 
make sure our footage node is clicked, hit shift spacebar, and let's type in planar, and that should just come up with either planar transform or planar tracker. We want to select planar tracker. We want to add that into our fusion. It'll pop in right after footage. Now with this selected, we want to come down to where it says tracker. We want to do point hybrid area. And for this, we only need our translation track. That's going to just track where we want it on here. So now let's select a couple areas where we want it tracked. Let's track this data right here. It's kind of a contrasty area and it should work. Make sure you guys set your reference frame. Always be sure to do that before you start tracking and just track to end. All right, now that we have that tracked, what we can do is come right down here where it says create planar transform. And that is gonna create the data that we just cre uh, got from the track. And that is going to give us everything we need to have this smiley face tracked to the wall. So you grab the planar transform and you wanna put that in after the paint. So you wanna connect that. And then we wanna take the planar transform and connect it to the merge. And now when we play this back, our smiley face is tracked to the wall. And that'll look a little something like this. Let's go back to our edit page and check it on out. All right, and just like that, the smiley face will be tracked to the wall just like this. If you notice, it just sits right there and doesn't move. All right, guys, so that is how you do the neon draw effect. There's tons of cool ways you can utilize this in your videos. I use it a lot of my recap videos. I've seen it used, like I said, in music videos, product videos, you name it, people have used it. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of cool other tutorials out there to uh, that show how to do it, but this is how I do it, and it's pretty simple, as you guys saw. I want to thank everybody for subscribing. We are well over a thousand now, which is insane. I know I said I'm going to be doing a giveaway, which is still going to happen. I, uh, I'm just working on making the, some of the fine details come together on it. It's a little tough with the way things are, but I promise you guys it's still happening. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribing and following along. Hit that bell notification. And like I said, we're doing a lot of cool different reviews, a lot of cool tutorials, and we're making this an awesome channel. And I thank you guys for making this happen for me and for us. So I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Bye.